Hey guys, it's Gracie and Griffin. Today we're gonna share with you our EC journey. Griffin is 16 months old and he's been out of diapers for about two or three months. And we're gonna just explain the process of how that came to be and where we started, how we started, what we used and um, I mean, for me, my motivation behind, <laughs> bless you. <laughs> My motivation for starting EC was what? to potty train Griffin early. So. It's called elimination communication. Um, a lot of people practice it around the world. It's mm -hmm. not super popular here. Mm -hmm. um, it's not called EC most places because that's just what you do. It's just a natural process for a human being. Either you can teach them to go to the bathroom in the toilet or go in a diaper. And eventually you're going to have to teach them how to go in toilets. So um, places that don't have access to diapers yeah. like we do. Um, but we don't talk about it a lot here and it seems really crazy and it seems like a lot of work and it seems really intimidating. So I just wanted to tell you all how easy it was for us. Okay, so right now Griffin is signing to go to the bathroom. You can't see because... Uh, He's out of frame, but Griffin. So he just signed, he has a little uh, toilet here. He just signed to me the potty sign, which I took off his uh, underwear and his shorts and now he's going pee in the little toilet. <sighs> it's pretty awesome. <laughs> So right now Griffin wears these little trainers. These you can get three pairs for six dollars on Amazon. I'll link them below, and um, they're the cheapest ones I found, and they're cute little Mickey Mouse prints, and they work really good. They don't catch a pee, but there is a little bit of extra padding in the middle. Um, yeah, they're just kind of like little padded underwear called trainers. Anyways, usually he doesn't wear um, underwear or anything on the bottom at home because he started going to the potty by himself but he doesn't know how to pull down his pants yet but we're you know we're making a video today so yeah put on a cute little outfit hi whenever you buy the go diaper free book you're put into a facebook group that is worth the 45 dollars even if you never read the book it is super informative it's got thousands of people in there who practice ec it's a very busy group you can ask questions and um there's people that are on salary working in there just to answer the questions other coaches so it's really helpful so before griffin was born i had never even changed a diaper before and the thought of just changing dirty diapers did not sound like fun to me and once i found out that there was another way I was like, okay, sign me up. I told my husband, who had also never heard of it, um, yeah, definitely we're doing this. <clears throat> so anyways, we started off. We never did observation time. We did keep him naked, but he was always covered by like a, you know, like a little blanket or a towel or, or a face cloth or something. So we didn't know when he was going to the bathroom to cue him. We only knew afterwards. So... We just stayed in bed for those first couple days, well, for like the first month really, but in the first couple days we didn't move much and um, a couple days after he was born, we started, I started nursing him over the top hat potty. So the top hat potty, here, it's just very small. <laughs> it's I never really liked it a lot. It's sold on the Go Diaper Free website. I didn't like it because um, I couldn't like put it under his butt and like get his penis to fit into it and his butt like because whenever he would poop he would always pee and anyways some people really like it and they use it for a long time but for uh. us for us it wasn't great for us we preferred the sink right so uh. at first i would nurse him and put that under his butt he would always go like whenever he was nursing so that's one way to do it i <laughs> got snacks can i have some another way to do it is <laughs> Another way to do it is over the sink or over anything really in the classic EC hold and this is what that looks like. 
So their head is between your boobs whenever they're really small. Um, so this is what it looks like. By bringing their knees up high like that, it um, straightens out their colon and it's kind of like a squatty potty position. I'm sure you've all heard of those. Um, it just puts them in an optimal position for eliminating. And if your baby has gas or is uncomfortable or has Hi. stomach issues, just holding in, in that position, like without a diaper on over the sink or over whatever, can really help a lot. It's their natural instinct to not want to soil themselves, just like an animal. So whenever they go to the bathroom, whenever you take their diaper off, like you always hear, oh, like they always wait till I put a fresh diaper on to go in the diaper, you know? And yeah, because, um, because they're thinking like, yeah, like you've finally taken this diaper off me so I can go to the bathroom, you know? A lot of people think that it's, um, the change in temperature that makes boys pee whenever they have their diaper off, but that's, uh, that's not true. They just uh, don't want to pee in their diaper. <laughs> Anyways, so we started holding him over the sink and whenever they're small, you cue them verbally. So you pick a word. Um, whenever Griffin was small, my his aunt, my sister Bonnie was there taking care of us and she had a hawk. And um, the way that she would call her hawk to her was Ao. So um, that's the word we chose in the beginning to cue him. We'd say Ao whenever we would hold him over the you know, over the potty or over the sink. And FYI, when your baby is exclusively breastfed, their poop is like benign. It's basically, um, there's no waste in breast milk. So you can just rinse it down the sink. It doesn't even smell bad or anything. And then like once in a while, I'd clean the sink or disinfect the sink, but you can do that. But if they're formula fed, then you can't do that. You would need to, you know, flush it out of the bed. <laughs> yeah, I know. So anyways, and then later on, that, he's going feral. Later on, that cue changed for us to pss, like a peeing noise. And we always did the same verbal cue for peeing and pooping. Hi, you, oh, you found a bobby pin. Just don't shove it up your nose, okay? Perfect. Okay. So we would hold him over the sink we would do these at um, different intervals, like for natural timing of a human to go to the bathroom. Whenever he woke up, every time we would change his diaper, so he's still. So that's how it started. We would, at every diaper change, at every wake up, anytime our intuition called or like we were thinking of him going to the bathroom, that's one of the best cues, or not cues, that's one of the best times. Some reasons why you might want to do EC, there's a lot of reasons. Like I said, for me, I just didn't want to like have to potty train a toddler and I didn't want to change dirty diapers. Um, also, we saved so much money on saving diapers some days even whenever he was like two three months we could use the same diaper all day long because it stayed dry and stay clean we would take it off you see him he'd go to the bathroom and we'd put it back on so i didn't end up using cloth for very long because i didn't find it very convenient to use the snaps because i was taking his diaper on and off so often during the day it was just a real pain to deal with the snaps of uh, cloth diapers so we started getting um bamboo diapers these uh, biodegradable diapers I'll link them down below they sponsor us now they've sponsored us for about a year and they're awesome even if they weren't sending us free diapers I would 100% buy them they are the nicest like crunchy diaper that you'll find we've tried seven generation honest all the other you know like healthier ones not healthier ones but you know what i'm trying to say the ones with less chemicals and these are so soft so absorbent and we also really like that there's um a pee strip on there so we could tell if he had already peed in the diaper without like having to like feel up the diaper you know the yellow line turns blue so 
That's what we did in the beginning. Whenever he was really small, I would even do it at night because he would stir and seem uncomfortable. So I was up nursing him anyway, so I would uh, EC him. And a lot of times he would stay dry during the night doing that. And then around maybe two, three months old, it just became more convenient to keep him in a disposable diaper. Or actually I was using cloth at that time for nights. I was using um, a wool cover on the outside with a cotton pre-fold. So on Griffin was a cotton pre-fold folded up with a snap. It's like a little tie off thing. And then in between that and the wool was, do you need to get up? Hi. <laughs> Between that and the wool was a hemp uh, insert, and that was really absorbent. So we would just keep him in that all night long. And I was swaddling him at that point, so he would just like stay in the diaper, stay in the swaddle, and then in the morning I would uh, bring him to pee as soon as he would wake up, and then, yeah. So we haven't done nighttime EC since then. Now sometimes, now that he's older, if he wakes up and won't go back to sleep, I'll bring him to pee on the toilet. And only in like the last week or so, he's actually started doing it. I've tried, it's called the dream pee, on and off throughout the last year, and he'd never pee. He would just get upset. And so, um, but a couple times last week he was teething really bad and there was like nothing I could do to soothe him so I just like took him to pee and it worked. He peed and he stopped crying. So now we're starting to do it and hopefully that kind of transitions into like uh, diaper free nights. Cause right now we're still using diapers for naps and nighttime. Um, I just want him to sleep for as long as possible. Yeah. He was actually staying dry on his own throughout the night whenever I first got pregnant, um, I was nursing him throughout the night. But then I stopped nursing him at night and I started giving him a bottle during the night. And so he was drinking a lot more and peeing. So that whole staying dry phase didn't last very long. I also had a little trash can in the back seat of my pickup truck. And it was just lined with like a grocery bag. Here, want that, Chris? It was our car potty and I had a change pad on the back seat. Um, beside his car seat, so I would um, just lie him down there, take off his diaper. Whenever we would arrive at our destination or before coming back home, um, just whenever he was coming in and out of his car seat, it was a good transition time. And I would often, I would always EC him into the little garbage can there, and then we and then take off. And we still do have a car potty. We use it a lot. Um, now it's like just a little potty and he's pretty much like a once a day pooper now and we catch it at home most of the time so um, but I do have these little they're called it's um, it's a travel potty called a potet plus I'll link it down below and I'll put a picture in here we have one of those that we don't use very regularly but it comes with liners that we sometimes use so like a few weeks ago we were at the zoo and like we put the potty down and just like shielded him and he pooped in the potty so we had those liners and we just like wrapped it up and I rinsed out his potty with my water bottle and it was very easy and discreet and no one even knew what we were doing behind our stroller and he stayed in underwear you know for the whole outing and kept them dry so whenever Griffin was about six or seven months, we started putting him on um, a potty unassisted. And at this point, it really changed the game for us because he was starting to resist being held. And um, <clears throat> so he was just really wanting more independence, basically. And we, um, once we let him sit independently on the potty without holding him, he was so he started going on his own super reliably and that was a great transition out of the house and traveling those are the easiest times for us when, while doing ec for some reason like we traveled to canada th this past summer and he stayed dry the entire trip to canada we were traveling all day every time i would be he would be I would, and you get so good at it, being a mom, like you can multitask, do so much with one hand. I would just hold him in one arm, like pull his diaper off and, you know, his pants or whatever. And then EC him and I would, I could do all this like just with him in my arms at the airport without ever using a change table. I don't think I've ever used a change table in public. But a change table at home was a huge game changer for us in the bathroom. So we always had our change table in the bathroom near a sink so that whenever um, he was really small, 
and not really small. It was right there. We use um, this like squishy top toilet seat reducer. We hang it on our uh, toilet paper hook because we can't hang toilet paper there because we have a toddler. Hi. And then he has a potty in the living room. And then we have one in the back of the car. We have one at my work. EC is not linear. It's constantly going up and down. And even now that he's been out of diapers for a couple months, there are still days where we miss a bunch of peas. But um, it usually has to do with him teething or he just learned how to walk last month. So there's like these big transitions and developmental changes that he's going through and that will sometimes like put EC on the back burner. And it's really easy to just go back to using diapers and I have a little bit once in a while like if I am just so over the day and really done with everything I'll like put a diaper on him for a couple hours and 99% of the time he won't pee in it because I'll still offer the potty but at least I won't be stressed about like him peeing on something um, if I just need a little mental break. I've learned to like let go of some of the control and it doesn't have to be all or nothing. I feel like Griffin is potty trained now. He poops in the toilet. It's been months and months and months, like 100% of the time. We hardly ever miss a poop. It happens maybe once every few months. It's super rare. And, um, and he pees in the toilet most of the time too. So. so there was no transition to the potty. I mean, we transitioned out of diapers and into underwear, but there was, we never had to teach him like where to go to the bathroom because he's been going there his whole life and he knows. And about two weeks ago, um, I was missing a lot of peas and I thought, you know what, I am going, oh, and he just uh, figured out how to crawl on top of his potty by himself. He has like a little toilet, it looks like a miniature toilet, and it was in our, my master bathroom, and so I'd be on the toilet in the morning, he would crawl on the one in front of me, and so I decided that day to just keep him without pants on or underwear, and I brought it into the living room where we spend most of our time. He, right now, Anyways, and he just would start, um, I would say, do you have to go to the potty? And he would crawl onto it. And... Griffin, do you know where that goal is? Here. Look. Yeah. Griffin, are you going to the potty? Yeah. What? Good job. Okay. So the transition to him sitting on the potty unassisted and then going to a toilet seat reducer, um, it was kind of back and forth again, very not linear. So he would go through phases of like crying every time we put him on the toilet seat reducer. So then I would start using another potty we hadn't used in a while and that was working. And it's always like that there's always going to be something that you have to switch up or try new and it's different for every family it's different for every kid and it's very parent-led you know like i knew that if i wanted him out of diapers i had to stop using diapers like it wasn't i wasn't gonna wait in, <laughs> until he was you know ready or um like you know taking them off himself like so that's why I did it and he followed my lead and are you all done? Mm -hmm. He's so cute. Right all done? Mm -hmm. he's, he's like, he's still going. Um, uh, w one uh, common question I get is how long should I hold them there? Like mm -hmm. how long do I give them to go? Especially whenever they're in arms, like sometimes they can get really strenuous. Like if you're holding them for like eight or 10 minutes, like for them to poop. Cause like babies, you know, like they'll go like five times, like in, you know, five minutes. And so, hi, he's so cute. <laughs> um, I would mm -hmm. sing a song, Baby Beluga. And if he hadn't started going by the end of the song, then I would, you know, put his diaper back on. So things that can help soothe a fussy baby over the sink or over the potty is running the water. If you're over the sink, sometimes mm -hmm. I would run the water. And if their head is right here, you can like kiss their head and ch -ch -ch -ch. Um, I would sing a song. I would, um, and then whenever he was, okay, he's all done. All done? 
he's like, I'm all done. I'm so grateful for EC because it has given us so much freedom to not rely on diapers. And oftentimes I would um, go places without bringing a diaper bag like, or like I would keep it in the car instead of bringing it into like everywhere I went with me, you know? Also wearing your baby can really help whenever they're on you and so close, you can pick up on their cues so much faster than if they're not on you. Um, and some babies don't ever show any cues. And that's also a really common thing you hear in the EC world, in EC groups is, you know, I've been doing naked observation for a few days with my baby and I can't pick up any cues. Well, some babies, they're so subtle that you'll never pick up on them or they might just not have them or they might change so often that by the time you figure out what it is, next week it's gonna change to something else. And the only cue I ever found with Griffin before he could, you know, use sign language or say what he needed, or show us what he needed was um, while nursing, he would pop off the breast and whenever he was really small, like under t under two months. And so then I would bring him to the sink, he would poop in the sink and then we would finish nursing. And that made for a much happier baby. Um, yeah, that's really the only sign that he ever showed me. So I would hold him over the sink, make the sound association. So I'd hold him over the sink, go pss. And um, if he was upset or whatever, you know, I'd sing a little song and that would usually soothe him. And if he continued to cry, I wouldn't continue to hold him there, you know, I'd just put a diaper back on him. But um, then whenever he started sitting on the potty independently, I would have like special potty toys, um, just different bathroom items, a brush or something like that, stuff that he could, uh, play with or sometimes a book will work or singing a song can work um, to keep them on the potty. Once he lear was learning how to crawl and stand up, he would just crawl off the floor potty and that's whenever we went to using a toilet seat reducer. Also another tip would be to always offer um, a bathroom opportunity for the baby after you miss one. So if they go in the diaper and you were having intuition about it, they end up going in the diaper, you're like, damn, I missed it. Still, every time you take off the diaper off the baby, I would suggest offering it because they might not have fully released. They might still go. And also you're teaching them that association that, you know, that's where they go. Also something that really helped us whenever Griffin was older, here, was acting, dis um, trying to distract him whenever he was on the potty. Whenever he was um, starting to cry on the toilet seat reducer, and I knew he had to go, and he's not gonna go if he's crying most of the time. Sometimes he does, but um, I would just like stick my head out of the bathroom door and like yell to my husband and act as if like we were having a conversation or like we were talking about something important. And then uh, Griffin would usually get really distracted and forget why he was crying and start listening to our conversation and then he would go. That worked really good. It still does for any time he's ever crying. <laughs> um, stuff that helps. So I would recommend checking out those diapers. If you use my link, I'll get money from it and continue to be able to get free diapers. It would really help me out a lot. Um, I have a link down below for buy one month, get one month free. You can cancel a subscription at any time. They're delivered to your door every month. So whenever you're traveling, if you're going to a relative's house or to stay at a hotel, you can set up like a little potty area, the same as you would at home. And you can set that up as soon as you get there and then just keep your kid on that rhythm. You can also like not even practice EC whenever you're traveling if you don't want to or don't have the energy to. Um, for me, it was so much easier to uh, to continue doing it. But for some people, maybe you have more than one kid and it's just, it's not a huge priority. Your baby's not gonna regress and forget what they learned. You can, you know, just pick back up whenever you get home and same if a, if a baby is at a daycare or a babysitter is during the day and they're not doing EC all the time or ever with them, you can still ask them like to change their diaper at every hour to prevent diaper rash. Let's say there's a printout on the Go Diaper Free website to give to caregivers and daycares explaining a little bit what EC is and how to do it. It's so easy and if there's other kids there then likely they're the providers that bring the other kids for like potty breaks and they can bring your baby too. Um, but again, even if you just do it before they go in the morning and after, whenever you pick them up in the afternoon, it's still going to totally be beneficial. And it's not an all or nothing thing. 
in a few months from now, we're going to have two babies and I'm so grateful that they're not going to both be in diapers. Well, maybe Griffin will still be in diapers at night. Who cares? Who knows? But um, I won't be, you know, changing diapers for two kids throughout the day. It really became easier whenever he started learning how to walk and taking himself to the potty. So, yeah, we just, uh, we keep it set up here. Hi. You have your car potty. And then if you're going like on a hike or something like that, you can just, if the baby's exclusively breastfed, you can just like dig a little hole with your hand in the dirt or just like go off the trail, you know, and you see them. Yeah. Right now, what we do, now that he's uh, this big, we have a little car potty. It's uh, the baby potty from Go Diaper Free. And we, I can't leave it in the trunk because he'll just grab anything that he can reach in the trunk. Even if there's like nothing laying around, he'll grab like a latch somewhere or want to crawl off. So I have to put it in the parking lot, like on the concrete, where he can grab nothing around him and I'll sit him on there and usually he'll pee right away. And sometimes your kid will go through phases of they don't want to pee while they're inside the house. And like when I lived in a house, not an apartment, I would just bring him in the backyard and pee him like on a bush. And sometimes when I'm at the gym and I can't get him to pee in the potty and like he's not wearing a diaper and I know he has to pee, it's been like an hour and a half, let's say, then I'll just bring him out to the parking lot and put you know, him on his car potty and he'll go right away. Sometimes he just needs a change of scenery or less distraction. So I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that I missed in this video. We've gone through so many phases and found so many little tricks that helped us even just for a week or two that I'm sure I'm forgetting about. But if you have any specific questions or anything, any questions, please leave them in the comments because I'm sure that they would help somebody else. And if I don't have the answer to something, I can check in with the, the coaches group that I'm part of and uh, find the answer and get it to you guys. So I'll leave the link below for my affiliate. Griffin, get here. I'll leave the link below, my affiliate link for all the Go Diaper Free products the book and anything you buy off there. I believe I get a small commission. And then I'll also leave Amazon affiliate links that I also get a small commission from. If you guys do use that, it's really helpful. And then the diaper links too. So the th I would say the top, okay. The top three useful things to do EC would be the diapers, those bamboo diapers, um, a car potty, and a toilet seat reducer. And honestly, okay, top four things, that little potty that's in here, the little toilet potty, it's the infant summer toilet potty, something like that it's called. You can buy it at Target for under 30 bucks or on Amazon. That thing has really, um, that thing has caught a lot. <laughs> so it was a really great investment in our house. And something that also really helped us a lot was teaching Griffin how to use sign language. He just knows three signs. He knows more, tapping his fingers together, potty, and all done, shaking both his hands. So that was super helpful to for EC purposes. And we didn't start young. I meant to start much younger, but I never got around to it. It was always hard to do the potty sign because I was holding him. So then when... Whenever he was around 11 months old, I started doing it and he caught on within hours and it was super helpful. So, we gotta go.